Hey everyone, welcome to Essentials where I try to teach you essential baking techniques and recipes. So today, I'm going to be teaching you something called sponge cake. To be applied, it turned into a Japanese strawberry shortcake. Before we start, always remember to preheat your oven to the desired temperature. For this one, supposedly 350 for regular ovens, but this one is a bit smaller and has a strong fan. So you usually adjust by removing around 25 degrees. So instead of 350, we're gonna do 325 degrees Fahrenheit and prepare our pan. Square parchment paper, fold it in half, fold it into a triangle. Doesn't have to be equal. Look for the center and then cut. And that should give you a not so perfect circle. First step is to have some simmering water. Put a bowl with two tablespoons of butter. Melt the butter and then we will add our three tablespoons of fresh milk. As much as possible, use whole milk and not the low-fat ones. Set this aside to somewhere warm so it doesn't solidify and also it'll keep itself look lukewarm. Look? <laughs> look warm. Stop, look. <laughs> Listen. <laughs> Let's start mixing the batter itself. So we'll be using four eggs. Just make sure that your bowl is dry. So I'm gonna whisk in sugar, a cup. Now comes the important part. Over simmering water, we are gonna mix our eggs with sugar. Make sure that the water doesn't, doesn't touch the thin parts of the bowl because we want it to be lock warm. <laughs> we wanna mix this until the sugar dissolves completely. And we are gonna mix this on high for around eight to 10 minutes. After a few minutes of whipping or whisking, it's gonna turn into the ribbon stage wherein it leaves a trail that doesn't disappear immediately, right? At that point, I'm gonna go with my low speed or four for this mixer. Let it run for around 30 seconds just so we can pop the bigger bubbles. Then it's time to fold in our cake flour. I look at when you call me big pump, pump. Right, because I just want to show you what I'm talking about. Grab a few, then make a figure eight. See? It doesn't disappear immediately. Next, I'm going to carefully add my flour. Like, this cake flour has been sifted twice. So, you really want to make sure that I'm not going to knock a lot of the air out. Okay, and then the rest of your cake flour. If we just add this in one go, it would deflate your batter by a lot. Now we will add our milk and butter mixture. One thing that I've learned is you should have a bit of sacrificial batter. So this way, I'm already lightening up the liquid mixture. Since we're not using any chemical leaveners like baking soda, baking powder, we are relying entirely on the air that we whisked into the batter. So we have to be careful. Preserve as much air bubbles as we can. Fold this in. Again, same motion, under, scoop under, then fold, under, fold. We just, now we just have to put this into the pan. So the cake pan that I'm using is around eight inches, right? You're gonna do two love taps, one, just to knock the air bubbles out, right? Then into the oven it goes. Our cake has a few more minutes to go, but while waiting, we are gonna chop up some straw. Actually, just slice the strawberries. So the cake is done, evenly browned. And before we check it, we are just gonna slam it like two times, just once, pala. So we just stop it from shrinking any further. Let me show you how to check if your cake is done. 
with a toothpick or a cake tester, just insert it in the middle of your cake. If it comes out clean, like this, means your cake is fully cooked. So this has cooled down a bit. Now it's time to deep pan. Just run it through the sides. Careful not to cut your cake. Parchment paper, chopping board, turn it. And hope for the best. Achoo! It still needs to cool down for a few minutes, but I'm not gonna remove the parchment paper so that it doesn't dry up super fast. While this is happening, we will make our whipped cream filling and icing. Right, so the cooling down of the cake, you know, the remain, remainder of its cool down time is gonna be super quick. But so now we're just gonna whip some cream. This is specifically heavy cream or whipping cream because it has high fat content. Okay, the secret of uh, when it comes to whipping cream, especially here, well, in more tropic areas, is to always chill your cream overnight. Okay, so now we, we are gonna start with low speed for around one minute and then move higher, okay? When it starts to thicken up, like it's, uh, the volume has increased by like a fourth, I'm gonna add in the sugar slowly. Never dump things in one go whenever you need to lighten it up or add or incorporate some more. By the way, I would recommend that you guys use powdered sugar or confectioner sugar. Now our whipped cream has doubled in volume. Stiff, but still spreadable and that's good enough. Right, so we will set this aside in the fridge while we cut our cake. One essential tip for those who like making cakes or want to learn about making cakes, round cakes that are frosted. Always have like a large flat plate or at least a cake board ready because that's the one thing that I used to forget all the time. Like right now, I forgot to bring a cake board, but we improvise. I have this flat thing and I have a bigger plate, so. Let me show you. Gently remove the parchment. Just gonna here. Give it a flip. And there we go. Flat cake. This is called a, a cake turner, by the way. Now comes the hard part. Slicing your cake into two equal parts. Once your knife is in, I start turning the cake. Don't rush, because when we rush things, especially in baking, that is when we make those awful mistakes. Have some whipped cream, put some in the middle. It's okay to overflow. Now it's time for the taste test. Part of the job. It's super light and it's super fluffy too. But for me, this is just perfect, especially if you want to break from uh, all that rich chocolatey goodness of moist chocolate cake or the sweetness of your buko pie or pecan pie. This would be one of the go-tos for me if you're having like tea time. Mm -hmm. 